Hey guys, welcome back to Four Towers Films and another Young and the Restless recap for March 12th, 2019. If you're in the United States, this is a day ahead for March 13th. Well, we start off with Summer and Nick talking at Nick's place and Summer coming in and Nick telling her that they have to get to the courthouse, the jury's back with their verdict. But before they go, he confronts her about engage, being the engagement to Kyle. And that seems kind of fast, especially considering the wedding is tomorrow. And Summer's like, oh, well, you know, this will be a happy thing. That the wedding is just the thing everybody needs right now, especially if it's bad news that they get with the verdict. And that will cheer everybody up. And it's especially considering that's what Kyle and her need right now with all the drama that's gone on and that yes Kyle and her it, it's fast but they've ping-ponged back and forth for years that she has always loved him Nick thinks it's kind of fast for Kyle considering he's ping-ponged between Summer and Lola for the past little while and that he's kind of been devoted to Lola for the last few months so he kind of finds it weird that all of a sudden now he wants to marry Summer out of the blue like this. Summer says to him you know it's kind of hypocritical considering he's gone really quickly from Sharon back to Phyllis and Nick agrees with her saying that it was a mistake that he shouldn't have rushed into a relationship with her mom and that he really should have known better from the previous times has been in a relationship with her that you know going starting something so quickly isn't always really a good idea things can go really wrong with with that and so Nick tells her that they really should postpone but Summer says nope nothing's gonna stop me from marrying Kyle tomorrow and that's it at the courthouse, Jack's talking with Billy, and Billy's being, you know, feeling kind of pessimistic about all this, and Jack's telling him, you know, let's be positive, let's have some positive energy, and that, be optimistic that maybe that the ladies will get off and everything will turn out okay, but Billy worries what's going to happen to Johnny and Katie if their mother goes to prison, and that, you know, they'll miss her and she'll miss them growing up and that they really need their mother right now. Phyllis shows up to the courtroom and she wants to support the women and they kind of give her the side look, you know, the bringing drama there and if really they wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for her in the first place. And Billy just doesn't want her there basically. So they walk away and she sits at the back of the courtroom. Mariah is standing outside of the courtroom and Tessa arrives, gives her a hug and Mariah is saying, you know, thank goodness that you're here and Tessa goes, of course, you know, thank you for bailing me out and Mariah worries that, you know, she might lose her mom, she might go to prison and she can't think of losing Tessa either. Tessa says, you know, let's not worry about me right now. Let's focus, keep the focus on Sharon and give all positive energy and thoughts to her that this is all going to turn out okay, that they'll let her go and they can basically put all this behind them. And Nick and Summer arrive and everybody's getting ready for the, the court. Michael's talking with Brittany and... Brittany's asking, what do you think? Maybe it's a good sign. Like, what do you, neither one can really get a read on the jury. That it, uh, they've been really stoic. That, that, you know, that they they can't seem to see if it's going to go their way or not. And they look over at Christine and Michael says she looks kind of nervous to him. That even behind the top exterior, that he knows she's probably worried that it's possible she could lose the case. And Brittany's saying, well, I'll be right about that, but, you know, time's going to tell if that's going to be the case. And they wish each other luck and that they'll get the verdict that they want. They call them to sit down and the bailiff brings in Nikki and 
Victoria and Sharon into the courtroom. They all notice that Phyllis is there and they look at her and not very happily. And they all sit, take their seats behind on their bench, uh, the, their tables. The judge comes in and issues a warning that there'll be no outburst, that anybody giving an outburst, they will be removed immediately, not be allowed in, all that. Typical judge stuff. And ask the jury to come in and ask the defendants to please rise. The lawyers have already gone over with the defendants that they will all be asked to rise and they will be given their um, convictions or acquittals separately, the judgment separately. The defendants rise and the jury says that all three women are guilty on all counts and they're kind of shocked but and upset by that and the um, judge says that sentencing will begin in two hours time and leaves the room and the women are allowed to stay in the courtroom with with their families and friends Michael goes over to Victoria and Nikki and tells them, I'm going to file appeal right now. This isn't over. It's just the beginning of a very long fight. And Nikki and Victoria go over and hug Nick and Billy. And they said they're going to be there. They're going to do whatever they can to fight this with them, no matter what they have to do. And Nick's going to fill in Victor on the verdict. And Abby had mentioned earlier that she thought her dad should be there and that it's not right that he's been barred from the proceedings like this. Nikki, <clears throat> Nikki says that whatever appeal that Michael does, he want, she wants him to focus on getting Victoria free. She doesn't care about herself because she's basically the one who killed JT, but she wants him to get Victoria off. And he says, no, I'm going to help work on both of you. And Victoria agrees with that because they're worried about Nikki's MS that going to prison is not going to help that at all. And Jack and everyone, Billy and Nick, all say that they want to give character witness statements during the sentence. And Trump, Michael says they'll definitely be able to do that. Mariah goes over to Sharon and Brittany and says, what can she do? Can she make an appeal on GC Buzz that maybe, you know, plead that get the public behind them? And Brittany says, no, right now that would risk angering the judge. Right now she's contemplating what's going on. She'll listen to the, the, the impact statements or from um, the character witness statements from the family and friends. But, you know, right now it's best not to basically aggravate the judge by going in and making an appeal because it really could backfire, even with public opinion on the women uh, um, that perhaps, you know, they could turn against them and that wouldn't necessarily help their case at all and actually can make worse for them in the long run. So as the women are taken out, Summer and Nick and Abby all group up and Abby basically is saying, are you still going to have your little wedding tomorrow? And Summer says, well, of course, everybody, you know, this, whatever happens with this, it doesn't affect us. And they'll probably get, you know, probation anyway. So it's not like they'll, they'll go to prison for a long time. And, you know, we need this kind of thing. And Abby's basically saying she's very selfish. And Abby's more or less saying, or Summer basically says, you know, more or less pot, meat, kettle. And she thinks it's a great thing to, to focus on a happy occasion, that that's really what everybody needs. So, you know, what's up with that kind of thing. And 
Abby says, you know, well, maybe not everybody be on board with that. So when Summer leaves, Abby asks Jack, you know, maybe talk to Kyle about this and, you know, slow this down because it's not really the right time. And why are you jumping into this anyway? And Jack said, well, you know, he talked to him and he seems to be just as on board with this as Summer is. But Abby has her suspicions that there is something more to it and from the conversation she'd had with Arturo. But she doesn't say that to Jack. And she goes, you know, I don't know. I think uh, there's something. I'm going to find a way to stop this. And she leaves. Billy walks up to Michael and says, you know, what kind of defense was that? That didn't help them at all. And Michael goes, what? I did exactly what I said I'd do. I, you know, I brought up that she was abused. I discredited the video. I said there was no body, that perhaps not even dead, really. And Billy's like, yeah, but why did you put Tessa on the stand in the first place? You basically made it look like they're career criminals, and they're not. And they got in, they get into a, a bit of an argue, argument over this, and doesn't really solve anything kind of thing, you know, at that point. And Nick comes in and steps between them and says, you know, I agree with you that, but that's what's done is done. We don't need to argue and be on each other's case. We need a plan to help get these women free. And they go outside into the, the hallway and bank Nick basically brings up again that there's this one person, this mystery person that put the, the fire poker at, at the ranch and the, the bloody clothes on Nikki's bed, as well as living in the walls, talking to Katie. And Billy says to me, really think that was, that was JT and that he's alive? And Nick goes, yeah, yeah, I do. And Billy's like, you know, well, how could that be when he dug himself up? And Nick's like, well, maybe they didn't bury him as deep as they thought they did, or maybe he had help. He doesn't know, but if anybody could have pulled any of this off and who had as big of a grudge against the family, then JT. It makes sense. So they need to prove he's alive, and that's really one of the best hopes that they have of helping the women at this point. Ajibo, Phyllis has shown up and she's in her office and looking contemplative and Carrie comes in and asks, you know, what's up? I thought you'd be at the courthouse right now. And Phyllis says she was and the verdict has come in and they're all guilty and she feels horrible about it. And Carrie tries to make her feel better saying, you know, it's awful for them because even Jack thought they'd get off. But her going down with them wouldn't have solved anything. It wouldn't have helped them at all. It, they still would have gone to prison. And Phyllis says, you know, right now I have to concentrate on work. She has to help her own reputation at the moment. And she needs a big win. Carrie asks, okay, fine, I'm in. How can I help? So Phyllis at first doesn't kind of want to say anything. But she says she has... They have to get an edge of the, on the competition that they're right now they're number one because they make great quality products and they have um, a wide distribution network and the job boutiques and stuff. But their number one competitor right now is Ashley's new company. And she thinks that they need a way to neutralize her. They have to be able to block her products from coming to the market. And she has an idea about that, but she's not ready to tell Carrie about her idea. And Carrie goes, oh, cool, you know, fine, I'm in on that. And as her, uh, Phyllis asks Carrie about Jack of Hearts, how close are they to coming to the market? And Carrie said they've ramped up production and they should be ready to do mass marketing pretty soon. And so Phyllis says, great, you know, does that mean we can up the marketing right now ahead of the release? And Carrie says, yeah, that's fine. She's on board with that. And so they, they make a plan to get Jack of Hearts to the market. And then they talk about Summer's wedding and that she's, yeah, 
She's happy for Summer, Phyllis, but not really so happy. She's walking down the aisle with Nick. It could be a little awkward at the time. And Carrie agrees, yeah, you know, might be in, in light of what's going on. And Phyllis thanks Carrie for her friendship and being loyal to her, not only just to Jabo, but to her herself. And it's not always easy to be her friend, especially right now. Carrie said, of course, you know, that's what she's here for. She'll always be there for Jabot and she'll always be here for Carrie or for Phyllis. Phyllis says, you know, we got to get to work. So let's get to it. Carrie goes out and calls somebody on the phone and saying, we just might have hit the mother load. Abby shows up to Crimson Lights and Summer's there getting a cup of coffee and Abby grabs Summer's arm and says, we're going to have, we have to have a talk about this, what this is going on. She demands that she cancel her wedding. And why is this such a, sh such a shotgun wedding to begin with? Why do you have to get married tomorrow? If this is such a, a love match and everything that you're saying is true, why does it have to be right now? But Summer says, no, this isn't any of her business. They're going to get married whenever they want to. Abby goes, well, here's the thing. Lola's going to be, Lola's my friend and she's going to be my sister-in-law. So that makes it my business. Well, plus she's also forgetting the fact that Kyle's her cousin, which also makes it her business. So, and so Abby asks her point blank, are you, or ask Summer, Abby asks Summer, um, if she's the donor and that's why Kyle's actually marrying her. Summer says, what are you insane? No, I can more or less couldn't care less. I don't, what happens to Lola? I don't wish her harm, but it's really none of my business. And all of the whole song and dance that they're meant for each other and that they're, they've loved each other for years and that, you know, Abby doesn't have to come to the wedding if she doesn't want to, and she doesn't want her negativity. And Basically, Summer accuses Abby being jealous. And Abby's like, what would I be jealous of exactly? And Summer goes on saying, oh, yeah, you got engaged at a vow renewal. And then you plastered engagement pictures all over the media. That's, like, not desperation, you know. And Abby's like, oh, talk about desperate. Getting engaged to someone who's in love with someone else. That's pretty desperate. And then having to get married really quickly while the uh, former girlfriend's still in the hospital you know that's not desperation I don't know what is so Summer says well I don't want you at the wedding and Abby says oh no I'm gonna be there front row to watch this train wreck Mariah and Tessa are outside and they walk up to Nick and Mariah goes, oh, thank you. You know, you knew I was worried about losing my mom and now I might lose Tessa too. Well, thanks to you. And it goes, well, you know, that's what happens when you blackmail people. You might get caught and go to prison for it. And he says, you know, I feel you and I understand and I love you and I want what's best for you, but it's best if you cut Tessa loose because take it from me you don't want to be with somebody that could is basically is known for doing bad things like tessa is because they only really hurt you in the end and he goes back into the court court resumes for the sentencing and the judge asks christine what her recommendations are christine says you know in light of all that's happened the seriousness of the charges and how long that they kept it from law enforcement. They need the maximum penalty that they can get. They can't be lenient. It sends a bad message. The punishment needs to fit the crime. Brittany's up next and she calls for Lena and Sue for Sharon because she was just a stand, stand, uh, she was, you know, being like, uh, wasn't actually part of it. She was just, uh, you know, 
kind of there. She was she was brought along with the other ones and manipulated not only by the women but by Ray first into going along and secondly to um confessing to Ray because of him manipulating her feelings for him. Michael comes up next and he says Victoria was a victim of this man and that he believes she would be dead if they didn't do what they did and that Nikki is just did what any mother would have done in protecting her daughter when she saw him saw her being abused and possibly killed if she didn't step up and defend herself so then we have character and witnesses Billy is first and says that Victoria's wonderful mother, wonderful business person, um, is kind hearted and was a victim of domestic abuse. And he believes she'd be dead right now if Nikki hadn't done what she had done. Jack steps up and talks for Nikki, saying that she's a pillar of the community, she's kind hearted, she's been there for everyone. She's given hugs to him and been there for him. And that a long prison sentence isn't, that wouldn't be good for her, not just because she has MS, but because it really, it's, it doesn't really prove anything. It's not like she's a career criminal or something like that. Nick talks about all three women that he does it would be unthinkable and unbearable to him for any of them to be torn away from their families or all loving mothers and it would break his heart for all of them to go to prison mariah comes up and saying she is living proof that sharon is compassionate she helps out on thanksgiving giving food she helps victims all of that and that mariah herself was not necessarily the nicest person because she didn't have a mom growing up, but Sharon's love turned her around and that going to prison is not going to solve that. The judge takes everyone's words into consideration and she says they're very compelling and, and persuasive. But she has to look at the facts of this. She does believe Victoria was abused, but that they did, they killed JT in a callous manner and that they thought they were above the law and that they could get away with disposing of the body instead of calling for help. And so she can't overlook those facts. She tells him to rise in the death of JT Hellstrom She's sentenced to Sharon to three years in prison. She sentences Victoria to 10 years in prison. And she sentences Nikki to 30 years in prison. Well, that's all for today, guys. On for November 12th, your November, or March 12th, your March 13th, Young and the Restless Recap. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss another recap for the YNR. It's looking good. We'll have to see who this mysterious person is. Is it actually JT? We'll find out. Until tomorrow. Tomorrow. Bye-bye.